Good day, folks. Today we're taking a look at Windows Codename Whistler build 2410 compiled on the 13th of January 2001. Let's get into it. Build 2410, I believe, is still a, a beta 1 build. It's definitely pre beta 2, it's definitely pre Luna. We'll obviously in a future video take a look at the Luna theme, which we all know is in the final release of XP. But anyways, build 2410 is pretty full of changes and some interesting additions for which I feel is worth taking a look at. I was initially in this little video series of mine only going to look at build 2419, but I decided 2410 has enough in it to justify me making an exception to actually install this build over 2419. And 2419, we'll take a look at in the next video since the build that goes in between 2410 and 2419 isn't nearly as significant. So anyways, what is new with build 2410? Well, one of the biggest changes was in the basic video driver. Now, in Windows up to this point, the basic video driver only realistically allowed you to do VGA, or what was known as 640 by 480 at 16 colors. And that was realistically the only mode that you ever had support for until you installed your graphics drivers. Now in Windows 2000 that was slightly updated and they gave you 800 by 600 at 16 colors which was a nice improvement as it gave you a little bit more room for the interface until again you installed your graphics drivers but it wasn't the end-all be-all fix. In this build 2410 you have a new Visa sort of built-in compatibility mode for the basic video driver that allows high color modes or true color modes based on your hardware if supported. So what this means was, you know, out of the box, if you didn't have a graphics driver, you aren't stuck to 16 colors like you were in Windows 9X or Windows 2000, for example. So you could actually have at a minimum 800 by 600 resolution at 16-bit color, which was a massive improvement. So while it didn't look the best, you know, if your hardware actually supported it, it was a big, big improvement over, again, the way that they had it done previously. And another change that is notable is actually inside of the setup itself. Now, if we open up the file here, that's called setup.exe within the installation media, you might notice it looks a little bit different. Now, the text is almost or in the layout too, is almost like the one that was in the final. It's just obviously the visuals are a lot different. It still uses the banner that looks just like the Windows 2000 banner, but of course, you know, this obviously didn't stick around. But some of these buttons actually are, you know, representative of the final version, like the support tools, browse the CD, install Windows, that sort of thing, and there's an exit button. Of course, they had in the final setup uh, more characterized buttons and the Luna visual style, but this was getting close to that sort of thing. I wanted to show this before I actually showed the build itself because, you know, you can install the build and take a look at all the things that make it significant, but these are the little details that I want to point out because that's what makes this build different than the other ones. So what's also neat is, of course, this setup is still, you know, the classic one, but I believe you do have Merlin in this, I believe, the uh, little help guy in the out-of-box experience. That's actually working in this build, to my knowledge. So I want to try doing an in-place upgrade because I want to see if I can actually get that to work. Now, don't quote me on this. It might not. So if that is the case, I might just do a clean install and, you know, tack it on at the end of the video. But, you know, why not, right? You know, while we uh, do this upgrade here, Oh yeah, that's right, this is another change. You have to have a product key for this build in order to install it, so I'll be right back. We're not gonna do the dynamic updates because obviously they're not available anymore. Not like they work anyway. Interesting, it notes it as beta two, but it's really not because, you know, let's face it, this is not much more different than 2296, but I digress anyways. 2410 actually included a couple of things worth talking about. Maybe we can actually take a look at them. There were some updates to built-in apps, such as Internet Explorer, which got updated to version 6, beta 2. There's also new Windows Media Player, version 8.0, and Windows Messenger 3, alongside an addition of System Restore, or an updated System Restore, which is also pretty cool. 
MS Paint is able to save in PNG and JPEG files, which is pretty cool. There's also a new zip file extractor tool, which I don't know if we'll demonstrate that, but you know, whatever. The professional theme, as it was known in prior builds that looks like watercolor, actually got renamed to watercolor in this build. In addition, there was also a visual style that was added called the sample visual style or whatever. It had two different versions known as Chartreuse Mongoose, I think that's how you say that, and Blue Lagoon. I believe these are two prototypes of the different visuals that came with the Luna theme, and I believe one of them was the homestead, or what was to be known as Olive Green, and then there was Silver. And of course, obviously, these aren't inside these, uh, these aren't inside these builds at all. They're just there as placeholders, of course, but we'll take a look at them because they have really interesting color schemes. There's also, in 2410, some additional icons that looked like the ones you'd see in XP. Now, if I'm not mistaken, in 2410, the most notable icon you see first thing out the gate is the Recycle Bin. Now, what's unique about the Recycle Bin is it looked very similar to that of the final Recycle Bin icon you saw in XP, but it had handles on it, which I thought was pretty interesting. Of course, the Recycle Bin in all final releases of Windows never actually had handles, so this was a very interesting icon that Microsoft was planning on using. Of course, in final builds of XP, the handles were gone. It was just the bin, but... We'll see that when we actually get into this build, those interesting uh, designs with these icons. Not all of them had unique designs like that when we actually get into it, but just pointing out that sort of stuff. There's some other things that were added, such as a product activation system. Now, of course, in XP, there was product activation. This was the first build that sort of added it, but it was never actually functional. It was hard-coded to show like it was a 30-day activation thing, but anytime you go to activate it, it would just say, oh, hey, you've activated this copy of Windows, that sort of stuff. But I believe in 2428, that was actually implemented and functional, if I'm not mistaken. But otherwise, I believe that was everything to mention. The only thing that's worth talking about after all of what I've mentioned so far was that the default wallpaper was actually set as the Whistler wallpaper. Now, if anybody knows, Windows versions up to and including Millennium Edition by this point didn't actually use an out-of-box wallpaper as a clean install thing. They just used the solid color. Now, XP was the first one to actually do this, but this was the first build that actually set that really nice-looking Whistler wallpaper by default. So, while it was included in builds as far back as 2267, it wasn't actually set as default until 2410, making 2410 the very first build of Windows Whistler, or shall we say XP rather, to have the out-of-box wallpaper set by default. Of course, Bliss wouldn't come until a little bit later, so this will have to make do for now, of course. But anyways, I digress. So that's all there really is to talk about regarding build 2410 as of this phase of the setup. So I'm going to let Windows do its in-place upgrade, and I will come back hopefully at the out-of-box experience. But if anything, we'll, you know, just continue on with the video as normal. All right, well, we got the out-of-box experience. This is kind of a bit off the cuff. I apologize. So I'll have to listen to the microwave for a hot minute here, but... It's worth taking a look at this because here we go. Now, unfortunately, I can't hear the voice. I think there was a voice that went along with this, but maybe there's something up, like some weird anomaly or driver problem or whatever, but I think a future build will be able to hear what Merlin sounds like. So I apologize about the microwave noise in the background. I wasn't intending on this actually coming up, but hey, it actually did, so woohoo. So here's a look at that product activation screen. To reduce software piracy, Microsoft needs you to activate your copy of Windows Whistler within the next 30 days. Activating Windows over the internet is fast and doesn't require your name or other personal information. If you wait to activate, you'll receive periodic reminders. After 30 days, you'll be required to activate before you can continue using Windows Whistler. Also, I'm going to turn these speakers off because I don't need the ear rate. These speakers are absolute garbage, so sorry about that. Uh, for the moment, obviously, we're not going to activate Windows because it won't work. Congratulations, Windows is set up. Woohoo, we can connect to the internet, but I'm not going to at this time. You can tell that they basically have the out-of-box experience nailed down to a T, but obviously we're not going to worry about that. 
You can see Merlin's giving us a bit of a looping trophy animation there, saying we're ready to start using Microsoft Windows. But again, since our sound wasn't working, it's not really worth putting the uh, sound on, but there you can see he's animating down to tell us to just click the finish button. Well, thanks for the useful advice, Merlin. All right, now I can press finish and I'll go ahead and I'll turn the speakers back on because we gotta listen to that glorious Windows 2000 startup sound. Even though I have to listen to that really irritating high-pitched squealing. Well, I guess we don't get a startup sound because I think the sound driver is messed up. One of the quirks of upgrading uh, beta versions of Windows. Oh well, it's not like we're really missing much because it's just the Windows 2000 startup sound, so we're not really missing anything. So I found out why the sound wasn't working, and that was because it was muted for some reason inside of the sounds and audio devices properties. So uh, now the sounds work. So I thought that was a little bit strange that they were off by default, but whatever the case might possibly be, at least now we have sound. I thought it was strange, like, why would it knock the sound driver out? Because I don't think they changed anything regarding the sound drivers, so it was whatever. Anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at some more stuff in detail here. As I was mentioning earlier, this whole recycle bin icon thing, oh, it's set to auto arrange. I should probably turn that off here. Notice how this looks a little different. There's some more options for locking desktop icons as well as auto lineup. I think these were new for this build as well. They weren't really mentioned, but I believe those were new features. But anyway, there you can see that recycle bin icon with the handles on it. That design really did not last very long, but here it is inside of this build. There's also a new folder icon, which basically is identical to that in XP. There's also a new MSN Explorer shortcut here. I believe this used the icon from Windows Millennium Edition at this time, which uh, it doesn't have the plasticky looking XP icon. This just has the one from ME, if I'm not mistaken. There's also a new little info icon, which basically looks like the one in XP. And otherwise, I think that's it as far as the new icons on the desktop. There are probably some more here in the start menu. Oh yeah, there is. So the My Documents, My Pictures, My Music shortcuts, those all have new updated icons, well, except for music, but I think that would come later. There's also a new My Computer icon. There's also a new Control Panel icon. There's also the funny looking Run icon. This was temporary, of course. Uh, it looks pretty funny they put run in there. I think that was a joke, uh, not intentional, of course. And this design ought to look very, I guess, similar to prior build, but now it has the layout of what pretty much looked like what was inside of Windows XP when it came out. There's just little subtle differences, of course, with the text, like more programs is eventually turned into all programs. Let me turn the speakers off again because that high-pitched screen really does get on my nerves. There was also, of course, the UI overhaul with the Luna theme, and of course the run icon changed, as well as some of these other icons. So that stuff hasn't changed. This uh, arrangement of small icons hasn't changed. The Windows Update icon hasn't changed, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it looks like a lot of these other miniaturized icons have not changed. One thing that also did not seem to make it in is the Internet Zone games. But I think it's because I did an in-place upgrade. That's why those are not in there, probably. But otherwise, it looks like everything else is the same icon-wise. We can take a look at System Restore real quick, which again looks like the one that was used inside of Windows Millennium Edition. We don't really need to use it because the last time I tried it, it caused some issues, shall we say. But uh, taking a look inside of an Explore window, so we'll reuse this Whistler 2410 folder here for the files of which I used to upgrade this. As you can see, all the folder icons are the same. Now, these other icons regarding like the rich text document, the standard text document, those have not been changed yet. But we can also see there's a new My Network Places icon, which is inside of this Other Places thing. And here you can kind of see that they haven't changed the Internet Explorer or Windows Explorer style of icon yet. Speaking of Internet Explorer, let's go take a look at it and take a look at the About dialog. Oh, interesting. There's a sidebar on the left-hand side. I think this was a thing with Internet Explorer 6 you could turn on optionally before Internet Explorer 6, if I'm not mistaken. Basically, what it allowed you to have quick access to... Oh, doesn't 
really appear to work. Yeah, it seems to be broken. But what it would allow you to do is have access to your search, media, contacts, favorites, history, and folders options. That would normally be up here. They'd be on the left-hand side with some other additional features, more than likely, or maybe the same thing. But I think you can actually turn this off. If I'm not mistaken, you go here and you allow customization and other stuff. But I think you can turn this off. Either way, it doesn't matter for the sake of the video. If you take a look at About Internet Explorer, you can see version 6.0 now shows up. It doesn't distinctly mention that it's beta 2, but it does change the version string that was previously Internet Explorer 5.6 to Internet Explorer 6.0. And obviously it's build 2410. And of course, we can also take a look at Windows Media Player, which is supposed to be version 8.0. So if we open it up here, you can see it has the icon from Windows Media Player 7. We're going to just pause that music sample because, you know, obviously don't need to have it playing in the background. I mean, I have the sound off, so it's not like we're going to listen to it anyway. But if we go up here to about Windows Media Player, yes, you can see it is version 8.0. And not much else really has changed other than the music sample and the version number. I don't think really anything in here has changed. It still has all the same visual styles from Windows Millennium Edition. And basically everything looks the same as version seven. So nothing really to report on there. There's also supposed to be a new version of Windows Messenger. Now I'm not sure if that is available to me because of the feature sets from prior builds probably still being in here, but let's go see. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any Windows Messenger in here, I think, because I did an in-place upgrade from 2296. That wasn't in that build. So my guess is that that's not in here. Not like it would really show much anyway because of the fact that, you know, it's not working anymore. So who really cares too much? And of course, we already saw System Restore, so we don't really need to take a look at that. Now let's take a look at those visual styles that I pointed at towards the beginning of the video. If we go under Appearance, and we take a look at windows and buttons, you'll see that there is this new sample test visual style. And if we click on it, you can see it defaults to using chartreuse mongoose. And look at that visual style. Oh my goodness, that is a uh, interesting design. So let's go ahead and apply it. And as you can see, here it is. Now, this is obviously the predecessor to the Luna theme. So this uses a different sort of design language. Of course, the start menu is not finalized yet, but you can kind of get an idea of what the classic modernized start menu looks like without having to apply the classic style. You can kind of get an idea that it was going to be categorized and it was going to be uh, in this sort of generalized layout. Now, of course, the profile picture for the account is not in this version of Whistler yet. That would come later, but you can get an idea. You get the rounded start button, you have the larger text, you have the separated system tray, and I believe if you had icons down here and it would automatically hide them, of course, in XP, there would be a little arrow that's not here, at least in my particular configuration, but you get the idea. And there's a theme of like plasticiness inside of the UI, like the buttons have an outline to the uh, buttons up here. They have a little bit more characteristics to them rather than just being boxy. Interesting. But what's especially noticeable is the plasticky lookingness of the start button. That's what really looks out amongst the rest of this theme because everything inside of here otherwise, other than this oddball corner looking piece, is basically very plasticky. And we'll also go in and take a look at the Blue Lagoon theme, which is similar, but it has a very slightly altered color scheme and it's not nearly as completed as the chartreuse mongoose theme as you can see it still retains some of the elements of the previous theme like the plasticky looking start button but the color scheme has changed and so as you can see it has a gradiential effect between this very light bluish looking color all the way down to a very light blue it still retains the green system tray the as I mentioned before, the plasticky looking start button, but the color scheme's a little different. It's still mainly just as broken. And interestingly, in this theme's case, it has a yellow accent color. What a bizarre color to choose. I don't know what the Chartreuse Mongoose had for its accent color. I didn't pay attention to it. It was probably green. 
And as you can see, display properties here shows the inactive color as being this purple color. And of course the buttons stand out, or at least this help one does. And it looks like there's a very light accent color. But what's the accent color on the Chartreuse Mongoose theme? That I was really kind of curious about. Like what did it use? It was also yellow, okay. So nothing really different there. If we go into an explore window, as you can tell, it looks very interesting. We have a, another gradient applied here going from orange to lime green or grass green. I don't know what kind of green you want to consider it this week, but very interesting, shall we say. XP didn't have anything like this. So I'm not really sure other than experimental reasons why Microsoft would have done something like this. You can see that the Explorer icon up here is actually inside this cornered cutout piece. Uh, so maybe they were just practicing with the design of the themes. And of course the buttons are cut up towards the bottom. I wonder if there's some other programs that would exhibit some interesting behavior. I'm not sure what it will do if we open Windows Movie Maker, for example. Let's go take a look. Oh my goodness, what the heck is going on here? We're going to exit out of the tour here. What? Oh my, that's uh, good, as we would say in my uh, Discord server. I think the interface is practically uh, glitched out here, at least temporarily, because of the way that it's painted. So let me see if... No, that doesn't fix it. So um, yeah, this theme, this uh, experimental theme has some bugs, no doubt. I don't know if Windows Movie Maker got any updates. Eh, they, I think maybe 1.1, but I think that would have already been documented in a prior build. Maybe not. I don't know. But it's supposed to have the same gradiential color scheme from orange to the light green. And you can see the buttons in the taskbar are also very lime green. Does Windows Media Player do that? No, Windows Media Player is its own self-contained user interface. Okay. What if there's other applications that exhibit some odd behavior? Let's say we go under the system restore once again. Let's see if it does anything goofy. No, it doesn't. I wonder if the help and support would. Let's go take a look at that. No help and support doesn't do it either. Okay. What's new is not implemented in Whistler Beta 1. Well, they obviously haven't changed that part of it yet. <laughs> so yeah, that's the experimental theme in a minor nutshell. Obviously far from being completed, but you kind of get the idea, I guess. But of course, watercolor is where this is at. This is the well, the most well-recognized theme throughout this entire version series of uh, Windows betas. So with that, I think that's it for build 2410 that I believe is really worth demonstrating, or at least off of the top of my head. I mean, because we could go and take a look at paint and see how it shows how you can save in PNG and JPEG files, or we could see if we could get the zip extractor to show up, or some other things as well. But otherwise, I really think that's it regarding this video. If you like what you saw, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like it so much, click the thumbs down button. Maybe because I missed a feature like, I don't know, product activation. Oh, man. If you want to see more videos just like this one or perhaps more interesting content, click the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss whenever I upload a new video. Because why would you want to miss when Jordan Woolery uploads a new video? I don't know. Maybe you're weird like that. And with that having been said, thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.